Now this next restaurant might be a big surprise for some people because there's a brand new place in Boston where you can find Asian barbecue ribs, a prime aged sirloin and incredible chocolate profiteroles from a familiar name. There's, tacos. there's a brand new restaurant in downtown Crossing with a name you just might recognize. Legal Crossing is the latest spin-off of Boston's famous legal seafoods restaurants. And inside this sleek space, there are dark woods and walls, a large bar serving up inventive cocktails, and a menu that goes way beyond boring. A flank steak over that would be unbelievable. Legal CEO Roger Berkowitz wanted to create a neighborhood restaurant for this fast-paced, rapidly changing neighborhood with food, service, and atmosphere that match the energy and excitement of the area. You have the Opera House across the way, you have the Paramount here. You have a degree of excitement here, and we thought that we would have sort of a theater-style restaurant that wasn't too formal, but was just sort of nice enough that if you were going to theater, this was the kind of place you'd want to stop into. And just like the atmosphere was meant to match the location, so was the food. So executive chef Rich Vellante has created a menu with plenty of influences from Asia and all around the world. We take the inspiration from the downtown and the diversity here and the excitement that's happening here in downtown, and we created this restaurant for it. Much of the food at Legal Crossing is meant for sharing, like plump and golden fried oysters served in the shell with coleslaw and barbecue aioli, lamb ribs with a five spice rub and sweet and spicy hoisin glaze, and paprika shrimp atop a ragu of braised chickpeas and Chinese sausage. A light bite that's great for a group is the white clam pizzetta with arugula and pancetta. But for a big bowl of luxury you won't want to share, order the lobster soup topped with a puff pastry and poured table size. There's always a little bit of a show, and when you give a little bit of a show for a guest, I think that makes them feel good. For another beautifully presented taste of lobster, try it poached in butter. If you really want to be a little bit decadent, you really want to poach it, and so you allow the flavors of the butter to really permeate the lobster meat, and that really softens the texture as well, so you've got this buttery feel, and it just goes down nice and easy. And this dish certainly is a bit more upscale than lobster in the rough. Essentially, it has a lot of elements of a lobster bacon. in it. There's a corn broth, corn foam. There are pieces of chorizo in it, pearl onions. You feel like you're not getting it nearly as messy, but you feel like you're eating a lobster bake. Since this restaurant is part of the Legal Seafoods family, the chefs are very well trained. But the kitchen here at Legal Crossing is laid out differently than most, which gives the staff advantages and challenges. This kitchen is a piano style. Fish taco solo? And the piano style means that you're working basically in a square. 101. And all of the stations are facing each other. One crab sandwich? And so they have to work in coordination. One onion ring, please. Onion ring. And so it's a little bit like a ballet, if you will. Uh, they have to time things together, they have to work together to make the dish, because one dish might come from two different stations, maybe even three. And all that teamwork helps create some seriously good entrees, from seared scallops and soft-shell crabs to something known as everything tuna, crusted with the same spices you'd find on an everything bagel. Of course, the menu certainly is stacked with seafood, but steak fans aren't left out in the cold. In fact, Chef Rich is especially proud of the restaurant's prime sirloin, aged for 49 days and cooked to perfection saute it, we sear it, we baste it, we serve it with bone marrow butter, we serve it with smoked onion rings. And if you're a steak lover, this is something that you can't miss. Rounding out the meal are desserts like sticky toffee cake with buttermilk ice cream and adult profiteroles smothered in a Valrhona chocolate sauce. But the most fun might be at the bar, where cocktails are given playful names that harken back to a time when this area was a bit naughty, like the drink known as cold tea, a beer-based cocktail served in a stainless steel teapot paying homage to a late-night Chinatown tradition. Rumor has it that uh, if you went to Chinatown after hours and were still looking for an alcoholic beverage, the code word was cold tea, and you got a teapot, and inside the teapot would be beer. Now, allegedly, allegedly, I never experienced that. But Roger does have plenty of experience in this neighborhood. He visited here as a child, lived here as an adult, and has fond memories of what this neighborhood was and what it can be again. I had experienced this neighborhood uh, back when I was a kid. It was really the shopping mecca of New England. 
and it was really a, an exciting place to be. It's hard to recreate things, but I think you know, if we can capture some of the fun and sparkle of what existed before, I think uh, everyone will enjoy, uh, enjoy the area. Thank you.